Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anthony James. I'm the Dean, Director, and Founder of the Thai Yoga Center and the Soma Veda College of Natural Medicine. And what I'd like to do today is I'd like to go through some points and give you an overview of what Soma Veda Integrated Traditional Therapies and what Soma Veda Thai Yoga, Soma Veda Ayurveda, what these terms actually mean and what we're actually referring to as this is the primary core modality or curriculum of the SCNM and Thai Yoga Center. This is also the primary uh, ministerial counseling modality of the Native American Indigenous Church. So it's quite important uh, that you get a good clear overview of what we're talking about here, what's included, what's not included, what do we emphasize, uh, where are we coming from uh, therapeutically? Foolish is the doctor who despises the knowledge of the ancients. Hippocrates, the core concept of indigenous, traditional, native, and natural medicine is that this is ancient medicine, medicine that comes to us from ancient and indigenous people to the present day. And which we practice as if it is as valid today as it was a hundred or even a thousand years ago. And every day we get confirmation that this is a good decision as we see the errors, inaccuracies, oversights, maladaptations, malpractice, um, side effects, and other problems with Western allopathic medical traditions. Um, I'm not an I'm not a Luddite. I'm not against Western allopathy when it is properly and ethically and morally applied. What is Thai yoga? Well, in Thai, we use a term called Raksa Tang Nuat Pamboran Thai, which, if I were to literally translate it into English, it becomes the ancient Thai spiritual way of healing by laying on hands to manifest the spiritual energy of the heart in a practical way. So technically speaking, in the Thai Buddhist uh, Theravada Ayurveda tradition, Raksa Tangnuat Pamboran Thai is the practical expression of loving kindness. Here's a nice image I took many years ago of Karen tribal villagers using a multi-therapist approach to Thai yoga after a day in the fields. No television, no radio, no other communication at this point, living in a bamboo house, working on a bamboo mat. The Akaladies come in and everybody just takes turns getting down on the mat. And this is part of daily life. They wouldn't think of going through their life without being able to share in this uh, communal way to share love and to share healing and to share therapy for each other. And we are passing on some of these traditions today in the work that we do. Now, one of the things I like to say is, is Soma Veda is very, very different from Western modalities of therapy. And that's because in Western modalities of therapy, you have outcomes that are reductionist, that are mechanical. Uh, what I'm referring to is like increase of range of motion, decrease of inflammation, reduction in disease symptoms. All right, the primary outcomes of Soma Veda therapies are actually quite different. We use a term called Promiwihan Si, or the four boundless states of mind, love, joy, compassion, and equanimity. Uh, not necessarily in that order. We believe you need all four of these things to be healthy, to be well, and to be happy. And this is what we're trying to accomplish with the work we do. No matter what the technical uh, uh, technical uh, look of it is, what the technical application of it is, what techniques we use or don't use, whether we use uh, counseling and dialogue, whether we use uh, nutrition for uh, sacred foods, or whether we do hands-on therapies and facilitation of yoga postures, that's all irrelevant in the sense of primary outcomes. Our primary outcomes are promiwihansi, love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. The purpose of Soma Veda Therapeutics 
is to repair, restore, and strengthen connection, communication, and awareness between the individual and spirit or oneness with themselves and with innate intelligence. It's to share and realize promiwihan si, or the four boundless, unlimited, or divine states of mind. It is to bring energy, attention, consciousness, breath, and pressure to bear on the entire person, and that means the spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical person, and to promote homeostatic and homeodynamic equilibriums between mind, body, and spirit, to support spiritual growth, health, and well-being, and to promote wellness and to alleviate pain and suffering. You'll notice that these are quite different from Western medical uh, purposes of therapeutics, although uh, it is popular today in Western therapies to maybe pay lip service or to mention some of these things, but because of the um, uh, Medical Practices Acts, uh, it's really untenable for medical practitioners to practice this way as their primary uh, practice of medicine, whereas um, it is traditional for us always has been, always will be. In our system, we teach four principles of mastery, which were originally taught to me by Sifu Dan Inosanto, uh, student of Bruce Lee. Danny Inosanto is actually quite famous uh, in the Jeet Kune Do, Lee Jun Fan community. I trained with Danny uh, personally. I became a, a certified teacher under him uh, years ago. Oh my God, so long ago. Let's don't go into that. Uh, but Dan, some of the work that Danny taught me in the 80s, I still practice and still teach today. It's as vital, realistic, and helpful today as it was then. And these are fundamental principles of Soma Veda. How do we achieve mastery? We believe that it's actually possible because in our system, we have many masters. Number one, research your own experience. Number two, absorb what's useful. Number three, reject what's useless. Number four, add something specifically your own. And we try to apply these principles throughout our educational and uh, certification process. And using these principles, we're able to take an average person and take them from entry level to mastery and uh, certified teachers and or eventually Ayurvedic physicians and doctors able to practice indigenous traditional medicine as primary source people, whether individually or in a group practice. Soma Veda focuses on life and health. These are the five fingers of, this, of the healing hand that we lay on our client, energy, attention, consciousness, breath, and pressure. This concept of the healing hand is called chirothesia, and it is an old and traditional term which references the extension and application of divine presence of the Holy Spirit, a divine energy of the Elan Vital or the prana of fundamental consciousness uh, in a practical way to a person and, to, and in a person's life. Now, what are the influences um, that we see in traditional Thai medicine? This is important because it explains some of the diversity of what we actually express when we say we're practicing Thai traditional medicine and Thai traditional medicine derivatives. The origins of Thai medicine are China, Burma, India, Indonesia, and Vietnam, and of course, indigenous Thailand. Uh, Burma is now called Myanmar. We also are direct, authorized, traditional lineage holders of known schools in Thailand that have ancient and established lineage. Our member teachers are directly authorized teachers, like myself, representatives and traditional lineage holders in several different traditional, secular, and Buddhist schools. The Putai Suan Institute of Ayutthaya Nong Kham, famous for martial arts and healing, for 900 years. Well, actually, it's well over 900 years. Under Pakru Samai Mesaman, I was a personal apprentice of Pakru Samai Mesaman, the 37th Grandmaster of Putai Sawan Institute. And um, uh, I have always represented that school since I was made a teacher in 1984. Prawat Chetapan, the Buddhist temple, Wat Po, traditional Thai medical school. 
one of the oldest schools of traditional arts under Pakru Mo Bunsorn, Mo Kitniam, and Mo Siti Sopon. Uh, I'm an, actually a um, licensed, authorized, certified Achan and Master of Thai Traditional Medicine in the Wat Po Association of Schools. Anantasuk Traditional Thai Medicine School under Pakru Mo Anantasuk, Achan Mo Natipa Anantasuk. Buntaltuk Hill Tribes Northern Provincial Hospital and Training Institute, commonly known as the Old Medicine Hospital of Chicago Komar Pai, uh, personally certified to teach under Achan Sintorn Chachigan. We're very proud to pass on the Lana and the Northern traditional style. Uh, various Hill Tribe groups of the North that I was very privileged to uh, spend time with and train personally: Karen, Lisu, Mong, Lahu, Mien, uh, as examples. ITM, International Thai Massage at Chiang Mai, John Chankho School, uh, Lek Chaya, Nerve Touch Massage, or Wat Suandak Style, Mama Lek has passed on, but we keep her tradition alive. The Buddhist Temple, Wat Suankalot School for the Blind, Foundation for the Blind under Acha Motawi, We on Klai Kung Wan Industrial Community and Educational College Program, which was originally sponsored by the former King Pumipan and Ananta Suk Thai Massage School, and currently also the Lana School of Thai Traditional Medicine and Massage in Chiang Mai, and the Sri Pai Buddhist Foundation, Sukhothai Thai Traditional Medical Development Center under Achan Pra Maha Sri Pai Apatado in Bangwa, Thailand. So it's quite a mouthful, but Suffice to say that we have verifiable lineage and genuine authority to do the integrations and to teach the various subsystems that are contained in the Soma Veda system. Soma Veda is an Ayurvedic system, which means that we follow Ayurvedic theory, science, evidence, and the traditional basis. Let me give you a quick overview of this. It's not uh, a super lesson in Ayurveda, but enough that you can kind of place where we are in the world of Ayurveda. Ayurveda, we look at uh, four things in our system here, adaptation and reformulation of classical Ayurveda, and uh, that includes major branches of classical and modern practice. Now, when I say that, I'm talking about the uh, Sashruta Samhita, the uh, Charaka, uh, the Hrigya, the uh, Harapika, uh, the, the, the classics of Ayurveda practiced in India and in Thailand uh, for over a thousand years. And we include the major classical branches of Ayurveda as they're practiced in India, Tibet, Sri Lanka, Burma, and Thailand. And of course, India is not the only place that practice or has practiced in the past. Ayurveda is a principal or primary medicine. It's under my direction, Dr. Anthony B. James. I hold five different medical doctorates. I also have a Master's of Science in Clinical Herbology. Um, I have a doctorate in Counseling and Pastoral Humanities, among other things. And lastly, we are a multimodality and a holistic system. And of course, what I mean when I say holistic is mind, body, emotions, and spirit. Uh, we address all of these, and we address all of these things in every primary therapeutic protocol that we do. Now, for those of you who don't know what Ayurveda is, let me go through a little more about what is Ayurveda. Ayurveda is really two words. It means life plus knowledge, or literally the science of life. Its significant attributes are it's spiritually based in Promiwihansi. It's prevention and maintenance oriented. It addresses causal factors in chronic disease, whereas Western medicine, as a counterpoint, mostly addresses symptoms or symptomology. It's a multimodality approach. Now, there are many modalities within the Ayurvedic medical system. Little or no side effects, uh, especially no side effects as we understand it from Western medicine and Western drugs. Uh, virtually, uh, we don't really know of anyone who's ever died as a direct result of receiving an Ayurvedic treatment for a specific illness or condition. It's based on thousands, there are modern thousands of published peer-reviewed studies on Ayurveda and more every day. It's an ancient primary medicine. It's the oldest documented primary medicine still in use today. 
It's primary medicine for hundreds of millions of people for thousands of years. That's India, Tibet, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, Burma, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and the Philippines, believe it or not, until the colonial period. Only Thailand was not colonized, so Thai Ayurveda is authentic and unique. It's preserved over centuries in various monastic orders as a sacred practice of hands-on healing and medicine. India is considered the mother of all organized practices of medicine. Textbooks like the Sushruta Samhita, one of our textbooks, have history going back 4,000 years. As a result, Ayurveda grew into a respected, widely used system of healing in India. And around 1500 BCE, Ayurveda was delineated into eight specific branches of medicine, and there were two main schools, Atria, the school of physicians, and Davantari, the school of surgeons. Both Atria and Davantari are venerated or held in high esteem or respect in Ayurveda right to the present day. And these two schools made Ayurveda a more scientifically verifiable and a classifiable medical system. As early as the Mahabharata in the Majipayat Mahalikan Empire, around 1500 BC, well, 2500 to 1500 BC, Ayurveda was called the science of the eight components. Here are the eight components of traditional Ayurveda, internal medicine, pediatric surgery, eye and ENT, psychiatry, toxicology, prevention of disease, improving immunity and rejuvenation, aphrodisiacs, and promoting health of progeny. And of course, these are also the basis of traditional Thai medicine. There was a period of decline of Ayurveda, which took place with primarily the British and other Western powers' colonial rule for the 18th to mid-20th century. And this period is known as the Raj period of Indian history, and it's significant in that it was um, uh, a time of book burnings where all Ayurvedic texts and practices were actually outlawed by penalty of death for a period of time. But however, as per Indian independence and Pakistani independence, resurgence of Ayurveda began in 1947. Official government support is reestablished and a hundred plus Ayurvedic medical colleges literally open within months of independence. A standardized curriculum was established, which WHO, or World Health Organization of the United Nations, recognized over time, and, e and as of today, it is included as one of the great indigenous traditional medicine systems of the world, and is formally recognized by the United Nations WHO. There was a resurgence of Thai yoga in Thailand. Thai medicine also went through, uh, if you want to say a decline, when the advent of Western medicine uh, however, um, when the uh, Thai doctors began to train in Western medicine was a, a turning point uh, where the traditional medicine fell into disrepute for a while, but technically uh, it was the same Thai doctors who poo-pooed the traditional medicine at one point in time in the uh, 60s and early 70s that in the 90s begged the government to bring it back and to re-recognize it. I wrote the first book of traditional Thai yoga published New Thai Traditional Thai Medical Massage uh, published in 1984 published in the United States in English and the see the popular Popularity of Thai beauty and spa treatments with tourists worldwide. It's now considered a number one service for diplomats and CEOs worldwide. Association of Thai Traditional Medical Doctors in early 90s. The Royal Thai Ministry of Health recognition in 95. And the formation of a standardized curriculum with federal licensing under the Union of Thai Traditional Medicine Society of UTTS. I'm very proud to be a lifetime card-carrying uh, certified Doctor of Thai Traditional Medicine under the UTTS. So we have two different concepts of health that we deal with that Soma Veda finds itself in. We have the Western allopathic, which is based uh, on the absence of disease, and we have the Soma Veda natural medicine, where all systems function optimally, energy is good, and mental state of happiness and contentment are the outcomes that we're looking for. 
Ayurveda defines health as uh, from the Sushruta Samhita as um, the following. Such a one is called a healthy person whose doshas are balanced, whose digestion or agni fire is balanced, whose bodily tissues or datus and eliminations, uh, toxins and so on, are normal, whose senses, mind, and self are filled with bliss. Imagine if that was a condition for Western medicine practice, that your senses, mind, and self are filled with bliss. Western medicine, unattainable, unrealistic, maybe even ridiculous as a, as a, a pursuit. Uh, routine uh, for us, and we do often achieve this. Some of Ada's perspective on the human species. Humans, we have an inner intelligence called the Atma, or an innate, underlying all mental, emotional, physiological structure and function. We have consciousness, vital, energetic, and physical constituents, such as Shen, Matrix, and physical body. And we're human, biological, multidimensional, stress-adaptive, transformational machines. We exist synergistically in relation to each other, Gaia, or Mother Earth, and the greater universal web of creation. So elements that we have that are not commonly found in conventional Western medicine. We're a sophisticated, systematic approach to prevention of disease from the ground up. We're an extensive, systematic approach to maintenance of health individualized and personalized. Every treatment protocol is unique to the person receiving it. We use both traditional and modern assessments, pulse diagnosis, such as pulse diagnosis, postural analysis to EKG. Um, we address the origin of the disease or condition more than we do the symptom. And we address the role of toxicity and deficiency procedures through traditional methodologies like uh, Panchakarma or the five cleansing actions. And we address body type and doshic imbalances. And Western medicine really doesn't even acknowledge these things exist, body types. Let's continue. We emphasize consciousness and mind-body balance as vital elements. We consider happiness and satisfaction with life as vital elements. Our sophisticated approaches to optimizing diet, digestion, and nutrition, we call that sacred eating and sacred nutrition, and we use extensive herbal and natural supplemental pharmacopoeia. We emphasize behavioral and lifestyle change in prevention and treatment of chronic disease. So we also have uh, three primordial functions of life that we acknowledge in our practice of Ayurveda. We believe that in the sattvic, tamasic, and rajasic, or a male, <coughs> a female, and a reconciling principle called the generative principle, or the three operating systems of all energies in our life. These are further expressed as the three primary doshas, or defilements. Classical Vedic literature defines a dosha as a manifestation of the ego as three elemental energies or humors, defilements or doshas. They're the three fundamental governing factors of physiology and they're the mind-body operators that all together determine our ability to live and function at any given time. Now for us the significance of the doshas are when in balance the three doshas obstruct the proper functioning of the body's innate intelligence thereby debilitating homeostatic homeostatic self-repair mechanisms. When balanced, the three doshas promote the proper functioning of the body's innate intelligence, or the atma or shen, to support all homeostatic self-repair mechanisms. So balancing the doshas is quite important. The doshas are called vata, pitta, and kapha, and overall they represent combinations of elemental uh, energetic focuses. And here we have three different charts that kind of give you an overview of differences in these doshas between air, fire, and water. Vata dosha, for example, governs bodily functions concerned with movement. Pitta dosha governs bodily functions concerned with heat, metabolism, and energy production. Kapha dosha governs bodily functions concerned with physical structure and fluid balance. Now knowing these things also gives us insight in what to address with an individual's imbalance 
of their mind, body, and spirit continuum. Now, we do assessments in Ayurveda, and we do assessments in Soma Veda Thai Yoga. Diagnosis includes two elements. One, identify the patient's constitutional type, the prakruti, and diagnose their underlying patterns of imbalance at the root or current or future disease, or the vikruti. And what's the difference? Well, prakruti is your nature. It's your basic type. It's what you're born with. And vikruti is actually the pathology, the pathogenesis. It's actually the abnormal or the disease state that you may currently find yourself in. So, prakruti, simply, the simplest way that I can say it, is our make and model. It's our seated body type. That's what we call it. And vikruti is where the imbalance arises. What can disturb the natural balance? Well, many things. Mental, emotional, and spiritual factors causing stress. Unhealthy diet. Unhealthy behaviors, lifestyle disturbing routines, environmental disturbances, pollution or weather. So disturbance of the doshas, or vikruti, looks like disease, or what we call. But if you look at what we consider to be the causes of disease, you see how the solutions that we're going to offer are completely holistic and are completely non-invasive, non-coercive, non-violent, and non-injurious uh, to the person in the course of trying to help them. We look in the population, we see that constitutional types are not uh, evenly distributed in the seven billion people who are on the planet Earth. Only about uh, approximately 80 percent of the population are bidoshic. And then we talk about the three monodoshic types. Vatas as being airy, active, tall, thin, and intellectual, generally. Pitta being uh, fiery, incisive, decisive, and intellectual, just like the Vata, they share that. And Kapha being more round, easygoing, earthy, relaxed, and generous. These are broad brushes that we're painting with here, and in actual assessments we refine these. Soma Veda approach to prevention and treatment addresses the person, their spirit, their mind, emotions, negative emotions, repetitive associative thoughts, their body, which is the tangible physical body that the spirit is housed in, the behavior or the noble pathway and addressing bad habits and the environment, which we call external pernicious influences. So we use what would be considered, in many ways, a mind-body approach. It is a religious therapeutic, but it's a holistic religious therapeutic with a mind-body approach. Tai Nuat as a dancing meditation. It's as good for the giver as for the receiver. Imagine if that was a criteria for Western medicine, that the medicine has to be as good for the practitioner prescribing it as it is for the patient. We use BET or EFT tapping to rectify unresolved negative emotions and distortions of the body's energy because we teach and believe that the cause of all negative emotions is a disruption in the body's energy system. So this is one of the techniques that we use to balance the distortions in the body's energy system. The practical expression of loving kindness as a sacramental and religious therapy. We actually believe that the expression of love is medicine. In fact, the true medicine. So let's look a little deeper into this mind-body approach. First, we'll start with the physical. Laying on of hands, physically manipulating the body of the client, chirothesia, which is impugning or imparting energy to the client divine energy using our whole body. We say we use our whole body to heal the whole body of the client. Panchakarma, detox regimens, Nuat-Prakop, herbal medicines, martial arts, and yoga, which you could also say are lifestyle and behavioral modification systems. On the mental side, we use meditation. Again, we use martial arts and yoga. We use Reichian psychology. Why do we use Reichian psychology? That references Wil Wilhelm Reich, who uh, we've studied extensively, and we incorporate many Reichian concepts because it's non-coercive, non-violent, and it's not based on uh, drug prescribing as a, 
as the primary medical solution to mental illness. Native American medicine and ceremony has long been used as treatment for mental illness. On the emotional side, we use biotapping, which I mentioned previously, EFT energy psychology, which is every day growing and recognitions even in the secular psychiatric and psychological mental health communities. Uh, fourth way psychology, i.e. G.I. Gurdjieff, Uspensky, and ministerial counseling. Native American church on the spiritual side, our puja and prayer, sacrament, ceremony, death facilitation, transition therapies, vitalism, and sacred food, all coming from our Native heritage. We do assessments. I mentioned that previously. The practitioner discovers the underlying patterns of dosha imbalances. Now, so we don't just wing it. It's not just about intuition or just um, the first thing that passes through your mind. We do various uh, assessments. We take intake forms. We do case histories. We do Ayurvedic questionnaires. We do clinical Ayurvedic assessments, including pulse diagnosis and doshas. We do direct observation, communication, medical dousing, or radiesthesia, and we still do account for the intuition. Intuition is valuable in a trained professional. And then we also do uh, clinical assessments that are CLIA-waved medical clinical assessments in our St. John POC wellness screening or rapid checkups, which has over 46 different um, therapeutic tests. So looking at these are some of the traditional assessments that we do. Pulse, kosha, dot two, questionnaire, signs and symptoms, function, attributes, tongue, skin, orifice, tie lines, chakra, and we also do astrology. We do differential assessments. That's the style of assessments we do. We share this with traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, and that we'll do all of these different types of assessments trying to get to the root cause of a person's imbalance. Our primary therapeutic protocol is called the therapeutic day, the Soma Veda therapeutic day. It's 9 to 12 hours of treatment divided into seven different sessions. And this is the scheme for the seven different sessions. 9 to 12 hours gives us a lot of time to get to know the client and to get to know the best strategy to help them as well as offering the therapeutic approach that we feel is appropriate for the individual client. Therapeutic approach, guiding principles or opposites are used as medicine and like increases like. This is typical of indigenous holistic systems. Now I said before we're a multimodality approach. Let me just give you a rundown. This is not comprehensive list. This is a partial list of some of the multi-modalities that are part of the Soma Veda system. Spiritual medicine, vitalism, ritual devotion, surrender, mantra medicine, bhakti, uh, tantra, puja, prayers and affirmations, laying on of hands, massotherapy, manipulation, manual therapy, which in traditional terms are called abhyanga, oleation, karathiza, and marma sakitsa. Yoga, all eight limbs or branches, earthing, grounding, acupuncture, acupressure, manual, electrovibrational, photobiomodulation or light therapy, sacred homeopuncture, classic sacred herbal pharmacology and aromatherapy, Nuot Prakop Samun Prai, detoxification regimens, panchakarma, colon hydrotherapy, infrared magnets, pulse magnetotherapy or PEMF and vibration. And more, our Native American approach that's integrated in Soma Veda includes spiritual medicine, ritual, ceremony, and sacrament, sacred and traditional birth ceremony, breath, holy anointing, marriage blanket, pot latch, passing on ceremony, sacred food and eating, sacred pipe and tobacco, herbs and plant sacrament, all plants are sacred by the way, spirit dance, sweat or purification lodge, uh, ceremony, sun dance ceremony, vision quest, making relatives or adoption ceremony. We conduct these right here at the school. We have a sweat lot uh, in the back of the property uh, and we routinely do one or all of these ceremonies. We also um, uh, travel and participate in these ceremonies with other tribes and other branches. Our multimodality therapeutic approach includes customized individual programs, 
which emphasize diet nutrition or sacred nutrition, herbal and natural supplements and preparations, mental and emotional balance and stress reduction management, Vedic exercises, lifestyle behavioral modification, daily and seasonal health routines, self-treatment and hygiene, Vedic vibration therapy, light, sound, energy, magnetism, and environmental health strategies, uh, EMF, ELF reduction strategies, grounding, earthing, no dangerous drugs, no radiation, no chemicals, no surgery, and no toxic substances. We use elemental therapies, hot, cold, wet, dry, mineral, steam, light, sound, electric, magnetic, and plant-based. Sacred dietary and nutritional therapies and strategies, which are foods and supplements, or dense nutrition, purging, cleansing, uh, mental health ther therapies, midwifery, life balancing therapies, death facilitation, transition therapy, clear light meditation, martial arts and exercise, and we have a back to nature approach, emphasizing earthing, grounding, and um, earthing and grounding technique and technologies. Pranayama, jhana yoga, vishnanamaya yoga, Safe, non-invasive adjuncts to Western medical clinical assessments, screening for catastrophic illnesses, blood pressure, temperature, urine analysis, BIA, EKG, ECG, capillariscopy, digital thermography, metabolic syndrome screening, CLIA wave testing, etc. 46 assessments to date that we teach in our advanced programs. Traditional Indian sacred health care educational program emphasizing Native Diabetes Care Counselor and Provider Certification, and also our new program, which is Certified Health Coach. Physiological Purification, emphasized through traditional use of Panchakarma. Some of it are natural herbal therapeutics. Nuat Prakop Samun Prai, herbs from bulk to back. Now, it's always been part of traditional Thai medicine, and traditional native and indigenous medicine to use herbs to create healing and wellness and we love to do that we teach this in our intermediate and advanced programs. Samaveda Thai Yoga Ayurveda, Swastayasa, Swastya, Rakshna Matarasya Roga Nivaranam to rejuvenate and preserve the health of the healthy and alleviate the disease of the sick. Here's a basic list of 25 benefits of Somaveda. There's hundreds, but here's 25. Help with weight management. Anybody can do it. Doesn't require special equipment. Can be done anywhere. Is a great way to be more active, both for the practitioner and for the client. As good for the practitioner as is for the receiver. Practically expresses love, and the practice can be an expression of compassion. Reduces symptoms of anxiety, low impact exercise, lowers low density lipoprotein, cholesterol, raises high density lipoprotein, HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol, boosts immune system, lowers blood pressure, increases range of motion, may reduce risk of some cancers, assist in management of type 2 diabetes, increases bone density, practice causes no harm to the world's ecosystem. No forests have to be deforested. No children have to be enslaved. No women have to be disenfranchised from their ability to live their life as self-determining uh, people in the world in order to facilitate our progress. It increases lean muscle mass. Its flow practice improves cardiovascular fitness. It activates the experience of joy, integrates mind, body, and spirit, reduces risk of heart attack, supports community, and yes, I could just go on and on and on. The art of medicine consists of amusing the patient while nature cures the disease, Voltaire. And also uh, Voltaire's friend, Michael Montagnia, who I like to quote sometimes, also stated, um, he who would strive to have the best of the end of the thing should strive to have the best of the beginning. And we believe by focusing on the origins of disease, that's what we're doing. We're focusing on uh, qualitatively affecting positive outcomes at the cause of illness, at the cause of, we of, of, of unwellness, at the cause of dis-ease, at the cause, and that's why we have a hopeful expectation that the end result will be good also. Aside from the fact 
that we have anecdotal evidence from thousands of years, from hundreds of millions of patients that say that these type of treatment strategies are in fact quite effective. All right, thank you for letting me take the time to give you this overview of the Soma Veda system. I hope that you find it illuminating, informative, and inspiring. And please do consider joining us in a class with one of our certified instructors or here at the Thai Yoga Center in Brooksville, Florida, or online at the Learn Thai Yoga online platform at teachable.com. Uh, you can find links uh, to all these on our website at the Thai Yoga Center uh, at somaveda.org and somaveda.com, uh, our primary websites. All right, again, I'm Dr. Anthony James. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, and I'll be seeing you in class. Bye-bye, la.